Hey, this is Iman, and today we're going to be looking at the Leidenfrost or Leidenfrost effect with this extremely hot pan. We're going to find out what it is, how it works, and how it can do some really interesting stuff. So now it's not very hot. When I pour in, it just bubbles off. The water just bubbles off immediately, just as we would expect. But if I turn the heat on and I start heating it up, eventually we'll get to a temperature above 100 degrees Celsius where the light and frost effect starts to take take control so we're approaching that now you can see it's getting hotter there is a little bit of dancing going on but for the most part it's still just evaporating away boiling away we're getting hotter now and we've got a bit of dancing happening there's one piece there just dancing away and now we've reached that temperature in which it's considerably hot so that that water just flash boils and it gets trapped under the water bubble creating a pocket of steam that the water can ride on and ride on it it does look how quickly it's just and it's it's silent as well so if I turn off the heat it's silent other than that er, initial sound of the water no boiling sound nothing just skidding around give it a bit of momentum it's gonna keep going and then it's also going to now start cooling down so once it starts cooling down the effect is going to reverse and I can do that by adding a little bit more water a little bit to actually accelerate the cooling but see now when I get to those edges which are no longer hot it's starting to boil off or not not hot not as hot as inside and then now everything's just boiling off as it cools down more and more and more until eventually we're back to where we started and then it cools down even further so we know water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. So when you drop water on a surface that's that temperature, it starts to boil. But when you drop water on a surface that's a lot hotter than that, well, the liquid starts to flash boil. The liquid instantly vaporizes. And that vaporization makes a layer underneath the droplet that the droplet can actually hover on. And because the thermal conductivity of steam, which is what that layer is, it's a layer of steam, because the thermal conductivity of steam is so much lower than that of steel, for example, that it's sitting on, then the heat can't transfer from that hot plate into the droplet. So it can't heat the water up to 100 degrees inside the droplet to continue vaporizing it. So it just sits there and it moves around on a very, very low friction surface. Okay, so, so we're red, red hot now on this pan. Um, and then here I've got my syringe of water. So we can see that if we pour a bit of water in here, it's bouncing around just like it's nobody's business. You can see here it 
turn this off so we can get the sound down. Now you can really see here, if I start giving this a spin, it's just going. It's going nuts. But you can see the maneuvering of that. It's even doing wee. Look at that. Look at that. It's just jiggling around. Really phenomenal. And if I were now to, to do something really interesting, and I were to take a bit of aluminum or aluminum foil that I've previously put into a shape. If I can carefully pop that down, look at that. That's now floating underneath and it's adhered to the surface so that now the entire foil is now floating. Look at that. Now what happens if I say put a shape that I've already put a bit of an indentation in, will that also float? Yes it does. Oh, and they, they actually coalesce. Oop. Put a bit more water in there to get it to float a bit better. That one's now adhering to the surface. My other model has now Look at that, it's just floating right on top of it. It's not even liking this one anymore. Let's take that one off. Look at that, it's just, it's just floating about on its surface. I've indented it a little bit, but I could probably, yeah. If I go too fast, it gets too And then I could probably inhibit the way it's traveling. I can steer it. I've got a little shape here that is reminiscent of a bit of a bit of a boat. Uh, let's see if I can get that to float. Yeah, that's floating good. And I've given it a bit of a wing. So I can just tilt it, but then I can also steer it. Now mind you, it's extremely hot, so I'm currently burning my face in the process, but it's definitely doing what it what it needs to put some more water under there the water seems to actually be attracted to it and it kind of self-regulates it I don't want to put too much but it's just it's gliding so effortlessly and I can get it to spin around but 
it wants to do its own thing. The water wants to do its own thing. And if I go too fast, yeah, it's not happy. And it just, it actually just finds itself, it like, it self-regulates. Look at that, it's just... Just where it needs to be. But if I go ahead and put a heavier weight, like this washer inside... It's not happy. It's too much weight. And even if I get more water in there, it just starts boiling off. If I get a huge amount, really push it in there, it'll start to float. But then shortly after, also, cause that, that washer disc is now not as hot as the pot, so it is going below the light and frost effect. It's just, I think it's just too heavy. It sort of floats. There we go, it's sort of floating. But I think it's just a bit too heavy. Whereas my little water skier he seems to be going quite well. Now just to get an idea of how fast the water can can spin, I can just spin that up. And look at it, it's just going lightning fast. Get a bit more in there. Look at that. Like a little synchrotron I've got going on here. And of course, if I go too high and get away from the heat, it'll start bubbling off as I go to the corner. But if I stay on the heat and just give it a spin, so that is indeed the light and frost effect. What I found interesting about this is that I could definitely control the little object, the little boat around the skimmer. I could make it move, especially with that sail up on it. I could blow in certain areas and definitely move it. So I think in the future I could make a little remote controlled contraption that actually can be controlled on a hot surface again. It would just be a fun sort of a thing. There's no real value to it. However, I think the principle can work in reverse. So if you had a hot surface that contacted a big body of water, you would still get the light and frost effect. But I think in that sense, it would make the object sink down into the water. It wouldn't necessarily float on it because it's pushing that water aside. So when we heat the water to around 380 degrees Fahrenheit or 193 degrees Celsius, then you get that instantaneous vaporization. Now I find it's best to use a stainless steel pot. Non-stick pots do work, but I feel like it doesn't work quite as well as just a stainless steel pot. The light and frost effect is a very interesting one, but it's not a really precisely measurable effect. So it happens at around 190 degrees Celsius or 380 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's very hard to pinpoint that temperature. It depends on many things like the thermal conductivity of the metal, the impurities in the water, the temperature variations in different areas. So it's very, very hard to pinpoint and control the effect, but it is very interesting. And there have been experiments done with different surfaces and actually allowing the water droplet to climb up a surface, depending on the ridges of that surface, and allow it to move around and even 
traverse mazes. So it is very interesting and it's definitely worth looking into. Oh, and uh, I recently did reach a thousand subscribers, so thanks everybody for subscribing. Please subscribe, like, comment, all that really helps. Thanks a lot, guys. Remember, dream big and make it happen.